name is Amy Moss, and this is my tiny house. I started building it back in 2015, but it is now 2021, and I'm here in Cranmore Meadows, one of the sweetest spaces this side of the Haw River. Amy is really unlike any person I've ever met. I think it's pretty cool how we connected so instantly. I feel like I've known Amy for a really long time and we really just met, you know, a few months ago. She's got this knowledge um, based out of exploration and like, so it's fun to go out and explore with, with her because like, cool, what's this? Let's look it up. You know, she's got like every book that you could ever want on, I think I'm just so very happy that I got a friend to hang out with. I mean, we're spot on, no matter what, like the things that we like and the things that we do. And it's just like, like when you're a little kid and you find a best friend, and I never thought that I would be like 56 or 57 and I'm having a best friend. Like, that's kind of weird, but it feels really good. She brings into the relationship this like really calming and very like intelligent, like she's very smart and, and wise because she like she just says things that gets me thinking like, yeah, maybe I don't have to think about it that way or whatever, you know? And so I think we help each other out, which is like a, what, what friends do. So we are tiny house dwellers ourselves and Cranmore Meadows is a tiny house community. It's a 30 acre farm located in central North Carolina. We've been working on it for the last two and a half years. Cranmore Meadows is also, it's a nature preserve. It is going to be a working permaculture farm and it is the home of phase one, which is seven tiny houses on wheels. And we're currently working on phase two, which will be another six tiny houses on wheels. When we started looking for land, for ourselves to park a tiny home, we also realized that this was a problem that we needed to solve for ourselves, but there's so many people we knew that were just parked in someone else's backyard that also needed a place to park their tiny home legally and feel safe and comfortable and not worry about getting one of those notices on their door too. So that's when we're like, okay, let's do this. If we're doing this for ourselves, let's do it for other people. And that's kind of when we went down that road to build a community for, for ourselves and others. So we call ourselves Benevolent Dictators because we did interview a lot of founders of intentional communities and intentional communities with consensus built in and they all said the same thing. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> we want to do an intentional community and they said don't. Yeah. So um, it's worked out so far. We have really cool people in our community and they have to run things by us before they move forward with doing a chicken uh, coop and getting half dozen chickens on site or doing a community garden. But we have monthly meetings where we discuss that stuff and folks can submit a budget to us and we can kind of all just talk about it as a community, but ultimately Nathan and I make the decision and give the go ahead. We also have rules when you're signing the lease, kind of like an HOA type of rules that folks follow. So your, your standard stuff. One thing we did have to kind of come to a consensus on in this process was leash hours because we like free ranging our dogs, but not all dogs get along. So we came to a consensus on doing certain hours of the day, which are leash hours. Come on, let's go, let's go. Thanks to our sponsor, Rinder Forest. Are you familiar with the age old advice? Keep it simple, stupid. Well, of course you're not stupid, but overly expensive and complicated subscription services kind of are. Well, I've got some good news for all you small business owners and fellow content creators out there. Take care of all your branding and design needs with Rinder Forest. It's an affordable all-in-one branding platform, making it super easy to create professional looking content in minutes. From graphics, code-free website creation, to snazzy videos and more. No design experience needed. Just take three simple steps and bada bing, logo. 
Need a promo video? Use one of their customizable templates and boom, pro video. And that's why I'm loving Grinder Forest because if there's one thing that years of small space living has taught me, it's the value of simplicity. It combines numerous services into one convenient, simple to use, inexpensive subscription. Save 20% off a monthly or annual subscription today. See the link in the description. Oh my goodness. Amy just texted me that two of the chicks have escaped from the box. Oh no. <laughs> and um, that means it's, they're getting big. Oh my goodness. I guess that's what we'll work on later <laughs> today <laughs> or, t or tomorrow. We've um, come up with, so, so she usually has Mondays off and I usually have Mondays off. So we call it our Monday fun day get done day or get stuff done day, if that's more appropriate. <laughs> so we'll probably have to fix up <laughs> the chicken coop. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And so all of these, of course her, she'll lay the blue-green eggs, mm -hmm. but the other ones will all lay brown eggs. Okay. However, oh, I'm gonna try to get Orion. Okay. Oh, geez, you girls. Now, here it is. It's Vernie. Come here, Vernie. Come on, Vernie. Hi. Hi. What do you think, huh? Is it? She's a good puppy. She's a good puppy. puppy. Yes, I know. <laughs> They're all puppies. I don't know. I always call them. My kids laugh, too. So I have a lot of projects that I need to do, but my first project that I have to do is to build my shed, which is currently under that tarp. And under this tarp is the wood that I'm going to be using to finish the inside of trimming my tiny house out. But I need to build a, a shed for my workshop, which currently is under this tarp, um, all of my stuff that would be in my workshop. And until then, uh, when I get the funds and the ability to do so, I'm just having fun planting and beautifying my space around my house. Yeah, so why don't you come in and see inside my tiny house. My total area, the, the total length of the trailer is 20 feet, and I have eight feet wide. This space, I call it the alcove, and I intended originally to have a folding out, like love seat. I found this wonderful piece, because I love books, and I moved it into this space, so obviously I'm not worried about a bed in here anymore. But I do have this lovely chair that um, was gifted to me by my sister-in-law. She got in a thrift store and it is awesome and comfortable. And although I was thinking of a recliner, this works beautifully. Everything around in my nook is like really something special to me, whether it's like the pine cones that I find on my walks, obviously my books and a lot of the art from my children and my family that I have. It's a great storage loft, and you can go and hang out up there, sit, and be um, very comfortable. But right now, it's a brooder for chickens. I have 10 chickens up there um, waiting to go into their coop, and I'm yet to find a way to get up it. So I just use this ladder. But this is just too easy, I mean, to come up and down. It's ugly as all get out. So I thought about, like, building or finding you know something but i know what makes this important the flat steps like so the round rungs wouldn't work you know i sit here and i think like what would be the best way and until i figure that out the ladder is fine so it might always be a ladder who knows this table was really special to me for a long time i found it in the garbage on the curb curbside shopping i call it and the couple um legs were broken and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I decided I liked this this way and I decided to keep it like this so I screwed it into the um, the wall to make it nice and sturdy. To me a table is everything 
you know, it, whether I'm doing projects or eating um, or just sitting and hanging out and playing Mancala with Tyler, you know. Um, this loft keeps changing also. My daughter got me this tapestry a long time ago, which was a bedspread, but I used it and it's perfect to create because for the longest time I, I never had anything. It was open just like that one. And, um, but it's nice to like kind of have that privacy, especially with the light on for the chickens. I was able to like close it off. But this, I'll tell you what, this is like the most wonderful place to sleep. And this um, little bump out space is my bathroom. A good friend of mine, Anne, gave me this little cabinet, which works out well. It is great for my spices and my teas. And I think it's a great use of the, that little bit of space inside your walls. I was a stay-at-home homeschooling mom for 12 years, or thereabouts. And um, I didn't have any skills. And it was this guy down here, Ron Petty, he was like this, he took me under his wing and not only taught me like the basic carpentry skills, but was patient enough to to deal with my, you know, uh, my problems of being, you know, an abusive relationship and gave me confidence. And, and to this day, like it, it, like I get emotional about it because, because it's a great thing to have a skill like that, you know? So serendipitously, I fell into this spot and every single day I'm grateful. You know, with Charlie, with my partner up in PA, we had raw land, nothing. And he had to put in a well and he had to do this and I watched it all grow. So I know what goes into it. I don't have a shower here yet. So, you know, like once a week or whatever, I can go up and use the guest house. They allow me to use a guest house shower. And when that water comes on me, I'm like, I realize what it took that I can have that water, like them, you know, digging the well and all the struggles that they had to go through. So it's like just being grateful and having a space to be grateful. You know, I think that's like the, the best part of, of living in Cranmore Meadows and knowing that those two um, have worked hard to get it so that I can be happy. We have um, a community guest house, so folks that have family coming can use that space. We have a community kitchen and, you know, washer dryer that folks use, and that's where we gather for potlucks. So it's just nice creating all these intentional spaces where people overlap and can, you know, talk and, you know, coalesce. Cranmore Meadows, like its name, is split into meadows. So the front area, the first meadow, is going to be our event center and retreat center um, long term. That's probably on a two to three year timeline. And then there'll also be an opportunity to do workshops and uh, lessons on alternative living, health and wellness, and green building. So in addition to tiny house building and expertise, we're also interested in earthen building. So that's part of what we want to do here too. The next meadow is where we are currently, where our house is, and right behind us is the first phase of seven tiny homes on wheels. The next meadow is going to be phase two and we'll have room for six more tiny homes on wheels. And then the last meadow, which is the most beautiful meadow, where the Haw Creek uh, circles the, the whole meadow. That's our glamping and camping area. So we have our earthen buildings back there. Here is our off-grid bathhouse. It's made out of our earthen materials. And one side is a compost toilet. So the other side is a shower and we're using rainwater catchment system for all the water. We're gonna have an outdoor kitchen and it's gonna service all of our glamping and campers out here. 
So there's three different natural wall systems. This particular wall has a base, big fat beam of what's called cob, which is like adobe. And there's also a beam that you can still kind of see at the top of cob, right below the roof. And then in between sandwiched are all straw bales that are stacked between two posts and staked down between layers, courses of them. And then there's successive coats of earth and plaster on top of those. There's some evidence to suggest that earthen walls, like charcoal, will actually absorb impurities out of the air. They breathe, so they pull moisture out in the summer. They exhale it in the winter when it's dry. Of course, because the thermal mass is so high, you can have the sun beating on it all day and maybe have a three degree temperature differential inside. And then same thing at night as it's cool, then it just releases that. So the walls kind of breathe with both temperature and moisture. And it's, you know, it's just stuff that was on the ground or in the ground. <laughs> you know, like, honestly, this could be a thousand year building. And when it finally decomposes, the clay, the straw, the rock, and the lime plaster, all of those ingredients you would just find in nature anyway. And so it just returns to the, to the environment. Amy's really been an inspiration and just like a role model for both of us, I think. Very she's much just so. so strong and knows so much. Like she's always willing to, or not just willing, but like excited to teach us things. And she is just this well of knowledge. I think we both feel pretty darn lucky to be around such a wonderful community. We have a lot of fun, like we have a lot of events. We do like potluck. And I think one of the, one of the most wonderful things about living in this community is that everyone who's here has a very unique kind of like set of skills or interests or strengths that they have and they complement the space really well. For me, I'm the youngest member of the community and it feels really great to have a space for intergenerational conversations and kind of intergenerational friendship as well. That's been something that feels really like a kind of family situation, you know, not like the nuclear family that can sometimes be really tense, but the family that you want to be around, you know. One thing you'll hear about people living tiny is that it affords them opportunities they wouldn't have otherwise. And so saving more money, traveling more, you know, living simply, things like this. And all those things are true for us living for three years in this house in a different location before we bought the land. As she said, we basically put away one full-time salary for three years. And so that was a huge part of the capital, initial capital to get this place going. We put this place under contract in April of 2018. And usually when you're under contract, it's typically like a 45 day close, sometimes longer. With land deals, it can sometimes be longer. We paid extra due diligence uh, so that we could have a six month window to close. So from April to November of that year, because when we put it under contract, we did not have the money to buy it. Uh, and so we said, okay, we gave ourselves six months to scare up a down payment and find a bank that will <laughs> lend to us. And we went through three lenders, four lenders before finally the fifth one. I mean, we were like weeks before closing. It's hard to find money for land. It's hard Just to finance land. land. Yeah, it's mostly cash deals. And for something this big, obviously we don't have that much money to pay cash. I will say Alamance County has been really good. It's rural nature sort of lends itself better, but when we first approached them and said, this is what we want to do, there was a lot of support at the planning level, at the inspections level saying, uh, let's, let's see if we can make this work kind of thing. And so we, we felt a lot of support from the beginning. But for the most part, I will say what made it simpler was that the county had a manufactured home ordinance, which is just your standard kind of mobile home park. And so they said, we're gonna, we're gonna um, permit it like that. And so it gave us a framework for like, okay, this wide of a road, this much of a setback and those kinds of things. But that ultimately uh, there were some ways because the, the land was so challenging that we couldn't meet 100% of the requirements of the mobile home ordinance. And so we ended up having to go first before the planning board and saying, this is what we wanna do. Do you think it's worth going? And they said, yes. And so they recommended that we then go to the county commissioners. We appeared before the county commissioners and said, we need a special variance basically, because we can meet, let's just say 90% of the requirements, but not these 10. But unless you approve this exception, we can't go forward. And they voted four to one to let us do it. And then at that point, we were just making sure everything got inspected along the way and stuff. But it was about an 18 month journey uh, for the permitting, the fees, the planning, the design, all those things.
back side of it will be right behind. Working on starting the community garden, and I sort of, volu well, I volunteered to head that one up, develop an estimate of what would be what would be needed, and then I've been, like for the past month, I've been in my spare time, I've been working on breaking breaking ground for the garden. That's by hand. By hand. <laughs> I just get a better sense of the the land, the the soil, what what's needed for that. In, in this community, there are no requirements for tiny houses. Some people ask, does it need to be NOAA certified, RVIA certified, and we don't care. We do have a requirement that it can't be over 36 feet. Oh, so a length requirement, yeah, as far as that. And, and That's just like our requirement. And yeah. 10, 10 feet at the widest. We like tiny, um, tiny homes. Yeah, because <laughs> some people say, oh, I have a 12 by 40 and just that's too much. It's too small a place. So the lot rent at Cranmore Meadows for phase one is $600 per month, and that includes septic, water, physical address, road maintenance, communal spaces, like a guest quarters, community kitchen with a washer and dryer, and anything trash. else, and trash collection, recycling. And we are thinking for phase two, we really like the idea of affordable housing, and that's, we're, we're drawn to that, and you know, we wanna make this space affordable for folks based on how much we've spent here so far and how much we're in debt. We can't really come down a ton on, on lot rent, but we are thinking of maybe doing a sliding scale for the second phase. Tiny houses draw a, a slew of different people from many different backgrounds. And so someone who's a lawyer could pay more than someone who's making minimum wage. And we have both in our community. We think that might be fair and it will also attract the folks that believe in social justice and want to be on this land with us. That $600 number we agonized over for a long time to figure out how much to charge. I should point out that we are not break even at that. We are still paying out of pocket every month uh, at, at that price point. But to go any higher than that felt like too much. To go lower than that would not be tenable. But um, the sliding scale idea might help with that. And and because there are people who say, I, I would be happy to pay more if it meant someone else could could pay less and that's I think some area we'd like to explore. Yeah Cranmore Meadows has been amazing it's um, even better than I thought it was going to be and I had very high expectations when I first met Callie and when I first read what they were trying to create here very intentional community building and they, you know, based on like really sustainability and connection and not just connection to people, but connection to the land that you're, you're living on. It has been really fun to explore this space and get to know the nature that's all around me, the trees, the flowers. I'm learning so much um, that I've never really, I don't want to say I've never had the opportunity because I probably could have done this in other spaces and in other ways, but I'm surrounded by a community that's also very focused on that. It's allowing me to connect with people who are also aligned around those things. The common thread that unites us is that we all live in these really tiny homes and even though we're very different people, um, that, that's enough of a shared identity to, to create a sense of solidarity. I lived in Ghana for five years, Nathan uh, on and off for five years, Nathan lived in Honduras for a year and when you travel and live in countries that are not the states, you feel a sense of community, um, especially in more rural areas and the houses are smaller, people are living more outside, people are living with each other, like they're interacting with each other daily, they're cooking meals for each other, they're taking care of each other when they're sick, and you get that sense of community living abroad. And we both felt that missing here in the States, at least in the places that we've lived, and we wanted to recreate that. And I'd say, you know, folks moved in in October, so it's only been six months, but 
I had a surgery recently and um, that was like the first time, I'm gonna get teary, <laughs> the first time that like I really felt uh, the community that we wanted exists. And I came back and there was food in our fridge. Folks had walked our dogs for a few days because it was an emergency. They had walked our dogs while we were gone. They had left us flowers, left us food, came over every day to visit and cheer us up. And so like everything that we wanted and envisioned for a community, like all coalesced in that moment. Um, and that was really, really beautiful. watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.